Hi everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are around the world, under the snow. Today I'm going to show you a sneak peek about possibilities around SharePoint REST API, but not those uh, whose we know, but whose we don't know. Introducing the SharePoint undocumented admin REST API. My name is Michael. I'm a Chisify Solutions developer at one point. I live in Nantes, France. Uh, you can reach me out on Twitter, GitHub, and I also have a personal site when I share some stuff. So first of all, happy anniversary to SharePoint Framework. Yay. So we all know about those REST APIs. We're using them since the Stone Age, or almost. We played with list items, with uh, sites, user context, permissions, apps, and content types, and so much more. And we always wanted to provide more to achieve more from a client side perspective. So when using tools such as PNP PowerShell or CLI for Microsoft 365, we know that there is a big one which is called the client SVC, but we also know that it's hard to play with it since it um, requires a bunch of unreadable parameters, but yet we try to play with it. But to go further by still playing with your browser developer console, for example, you see uh, many and uh, many many REST API calls made by by uh, by Microsoft 365, and we 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 can see that there are um, other features that can be reachable through API, such as Microsoft 365 groups, tenant administration, admin site properties, team channels, policies, and many more. But okay. I know you are going to you are going to tell me that there is already some uh, REST API documentation, which is called Microsoft Graph. Right, right. Okay, but the thing is that to in order to explore the Microsoft Graph, you need Azure AD permissions with application dedicated context, which can be um, unreachable or difficult uh, to obtain for some developers, uh, depending on their context, on the company, on the IT uh, governance, security, this can be pay painful to, to obtain. And also, it's, uh, it's limited to specific options, uh, depending on what you want to interact with. So now let's talk about uh, SharePoint Admin REST API documentation. Or, well, let's not talk about it since there is currently no existing documentation. But that doesn't stop us from digging up. So I was thinking um, about a use case to get involved into those um, undocumented admin REST API. I thought about uh, the scenario where I'm an IT guy uh, which works with a tenant admin on a daily basis and I'm working with the SharePoint Online Tenant Admin User Interface from which I can get sites information. But if I want to go further into working with sites properties, I need extra commands. So I need to use third party tools. I need to, to use command line interfaces. Also, the governance can be hard when you want, for example, to have a list of all the site collection app catalogs or to get all the uh, external users that are um, uh, um, declared in some SharePoint sites. And if you are working in IT departments with uh, tickets submitted by users, uh, which need you to make some uh, repetitive actions, can be uh, really uh, painful uh, in the long-term perspective. So my idea was to provide a solution that covers those uh, actions that can't be available through the uh, user interface and without using a third party tool. That way I can take advantage of the those doc undocumented and REST APIs uh, without any backend application and with the current user context. So let's have a, a demo about this. Here I'm in my SPFX Teams web part app. Yeah, that's a bunch of buzzwords in it. But anyway, I got uh, this user interface when I can access to all my sites that exist on my tenants 
um, so, and also my what I call the special sites, with which are, um, for example, the redirect sites. When you rename a SharePoint site URL, um, I can have also my the point publishing hub. I can have my tenant app catalog here, and I have my templates. I have the information if it's a group connected site or not. Which okay. This is something that is already available in the native user interface. But what is not available is the information if my this site collection has the app, the site collection app catalog enabled, which is the case for this site here, for example. I also have the information about which site is currently configured as my home site, and also a bunch of extra options here that are available or not, depending on the targeted site. So, for example, I can decide to set a site as uh, read-only, for example. So here, if I take my, this site and decide it to lock it, okay, now my site is supposed to be locked. It is to be in a read-only state. So here, for example, I, I can edit my page. I can add a new app, new page if I just make a refresh here. Now my site is in read-only state, and you have also this beautiful message bar that states that it has been updated as read-only. So this is this is something that is interesting uh, from my perspective, but which is not available uh, from the from the user interface. I can also decide to uh, hide the search bar because you can have a, a specific need from uh, from some users that, that in, a, in some company that, that for which they are using another search bar or another uh, search engine other than Microsoft Search. Yes, it exists. And I can also decide to block the file downloads. And I can also have access to some extra options here. Like, for example, um, I can decide if I want to disable the comments on site pages, which is only available, for example, for uh, communication sites. Uh, also, if I want to set this site as a home site here, I can decide to disable the options to run the flow, um, Power Automate flows and also to disable the sharing uh, capabilities, but only for this the one site. And this is pretty interesting. Furthermore, I can through always through uh, admin REST APIs, I can handle the CDN, for example, which currently doesn't have an inter a user interface. Even if the private CDN will be handled by Microsoft in the short term, it's still uh, an option that is available. I can also uh, decide to add a new origin. For example, let's say that I want to add master page origin. I have also the state of my uh, CDN because it can, it takes some time to be fully enabled. So this is so this is something that I wanted to 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 provide as an extra option. I can also handle the organization themes. For example, I can add a new new theme with color palette. Um, as you can see, I'm not a user interface uh, guy <laughs> developer, so it's pretty ugly. But you, this, this can the idea was to give you a sneak peek about what, what you can achieve with just a few lines of code and APIs. And of course, I can decide to edit my theme or add uh, add add a new one here. Uh, which are available then when you want to change the look of a site, you have access to these themes as organization themes. And finally, I can have also my external users, which is typically an interface you know, that is only available through the M365 Admin Center. But here, from SharePoint Online Admin REST API, you can access to, to this feature. So now let's have a look at the code. So here I'm in my web part uh, definition file, which is called admin SPO web part web part. Yeah, the name is bring by the Teams Toolkit generator. Thank you. Anyway, in my on init method, I'm creating two contexts with PNPJS, which is declared here. The first is with the current SPFX context. And the second one is with Azure ID and MSL 1.0. Uh, because it is currently this version that is supported by PNPGS. And I admit that I a little bit lied to you because for some endpoints, 
you have to request. Some endpoints can only be requested through the SharePoint Online admin URL. Uh, I'll show you a little bit later, but that's why I uh, declared two contexts. So once uh, everything is uh, declared, we're going to the main web part here, uh, which only uh, consists in the declaration of my co main components. I showed you before, uh, for like for example, the sites components, which when loaded, I'm loading all my sites. But as you can see here, I've also loaded on in my in my console log all the available site templates, but also the existed environments, perhaps environments, sorry. But here for my need, I wanted to get all the site collection app catalog. So I'm going to request a search query with this information and also getting the site properties for my SharePoint sites with this method. And once everything is ready, I got I'm 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 designing my sites table with all my extra options that I showed you before. Like for example, how uh, to set a site as read only here and for which I'm sending a site property and calling generic method, which is called update site properties, and which just calls a generic method, which is called sites, where from the tenant endpoints, and with the site ID as a property, I'm just sending the site properties that I want to update. So now if I want to uh, block the, down the file downloads, it's pretty much the same. And now if I want to access to my extra options, like uh, for example, set site as a home site here in the more action components, we got some properties depending on the site template. If it's a communication site, for example, I can uh, disable the comments on the site on site pages or set a site as a home site. In any case, uh, when I want to update site properties, I uh, refer to this uh, generic method I just showed you before. And to set a site as a home site, I'm going to work with the SPH sites endpoints, which provides me a method to update a site as a home site. This method, this endpoint also provides me the current home site for my tenant. And to finish, I got the create group panel here, which requests a group name, an alias, and a parameter to state if the group is public or not. This is the case when I want to create a group for a SharePoint team site, modern team site, which is not group connected. So I'm calling the create group site method from the group site manager endpoints with three parameters. And that's it for the demo. Just an uh, overview of some error that I met when I testing some endpoints. I got the authentication method is not allowed. I got the method operation is not implemented. So, but it's a, it's available anyway. I got a specified method is not supported, but it's and, and again it's it was it's something that is available. I got the optional params which is not supported but available as a parameter, and I got the special one the requested operations part of an experimental feature that is not supported in the current environment, which is what what I wanted to get on sites from the tenant administration tenant endpoints. So maybe it's a new feature to come because you get on sites. I don't know. So. A few examples of methods that, that you can query that, you can, that, is, that are available. You can you have the create group that I showed before. You have the site rename jobs, which is called when you want to rename a site URL. You have the get available tags for sites, in the, uh, which is related to the compliance center. You can uh, validate a group name through the alias before creating it with this method. You can get the members of, uh, of M365 group. You can get the configuration of, the, of your Viva dashboard. You can get the recent list. You can uh, have a status if your current uh, a site uh, as a parameter is a communication site or not. And you have many, many more. So what helped me to achieve this? So I, I use, of course, the developer console. I also uh, make many requests with the Postman, with the SharePoint access token that I got through PNP PowerShell, but also the form digest value object from the SP page context info JavaScript object and a lot of patience. So to finish, most commands uh, only works in post requests. And for some commands, they only work with the X request digest header. 
and some others only works with the admin and uh, URL and some others request the metadata object specified in the payload. And of course, all of these options depends on the API response. And that's it. Here, what really helped me, you have the SharePoint REST API Metadata Explorer, which was provided by Sergey, which is a really, really awesome interface that display all the objects, all the uh, endpoints available, and also the admin endpoints provided by the PNPGS, and the repo for the app that I use for my demo. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I will jump in and just remind everybody that any API which is not documented is not supported by Microsoft. So yes, these are good exercises and, and there's a lot of things where an APIs which are not unfortunately exposed to third party, um, you can call them, uh, but they might be actually get uh, updated without any further notice uh, because as, if they're not documented, that means that they are not intended to be used externally. But there's a lot of things, of course, from these APIs which we can learn. And also, great reminder for Microsoft on, on hey, we need these APIs. We need these capabilities uh, for our solutions. Mm -hmm.